Hi, I'm Jamie Ivey, the author of The Moon Guide to Provence, and we're here at the Domaine de Fontenil, just outside the village of Lormoran, uh, to find out about the history of this, this wonderful hotel and to meet the co-owner Guillaume. So we're here at the Domaine de Fontenil uh, with Guillaume, one of the co-owners, to speak a little bit about the, the history of the building and the hotel. Uh, Guillaume, it's magnificent. Yes, it is. Um, now, I understand it's a, it's a 17th century building. Can you yes. tell me a little bit about the family that owned it? Yes, at the beginning it was owned by uh, the family uh, de Savornin. It's a French family, very uh, important here in, uh, in the Luberon. And with time, uh, different owners uh, bought the house, and uh, with time, it goes and goes, and uh, with less. No, je ne sais pas dire en français en fait. Tu peux dire en français, ça va? Bonjour, bienvenue. Uh, en effet, Fontenay est magnifique. C'est une maison qui date du, uh, en partie du XVIIe siècle. Yeah qui appartenait à la famille de Savournin, qui est une famille française très importante en, en, en Provence, qui est restée des, 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 des décennies ici. Et après, la maison est passée dans différentes mains, différentes propriétaires, euh, jusqu'à arriver dans une famille qui n'avait plus les moyens de l'entretenir. Et en fait, la maison est tombée petit à petit en ruine. Parce que nous avons dans Lormoran la rue Henri Savournin. Oui, c'est la même famille. Oui, c'est la même famille. And I think there was a mayor of Lormoran called... Uh, yes, uh, exactly. It's a very big family here in Provence and they have several places, several castles, and Fontenil was one of them. What was the, how did they make their money, the Savonon family? What was the... Uh, at the beginning, I think it by, with wine and with, uh, with agriculture. I think like it was a uh, noble's family, mm -hmm. they said noble. And uh, in France, uh, they used to have money with, uh, with uh, the ground and the culture. And so you, you arrived here 13 years ago, I think it was, something like that, uh, maybe 10 years ago? No, we, uh, we bought Fontenil uh, eight years ago. Eight we years. had two, two years of, uh, of work, work, of uh, renovation, mm -hmm. and we opened the hotel six years ago. So your, your history was like many people, you were overworked city city people, Parisians, looking for the good life in the south. Is that how you came to... Exactly. Came to we, uh, Frédéric, my, my friend, uh, used to work in fashion. And for me, I had several galleries in uh, contemporary art. And we were a little tired. And we want to come back to the ground, to come back yeah. to the country. And, uh, and we, we were looking for a house for ourselves. And we felt in love with Fontenil. A house for yourself? <laughs> yes, it's a big one. So that's why we, we decided to change it. It was, uh, yeah. what was planned. Yeah. So I, I think I read a quote saying that it was the emotion that Fontenil provoked when you first arrived that um, convinced you to, to buy it. So what, what was that emotion? Uh, it, it was very special because it's uh, very difficult and rare to find in Provence such house uh, with a, a, a park like this, with these trees, very important one. Mm. And we are in the, in the Luberon, in the heart of Provence, with a very uh, nice uh, uh, vineyard. So we found we felt in love with uh, with Fontenil. So we're still making wine at the time you arrived. Yes, uh, on n'a jamais arrêté la production de vin, même pendant les travaux. Fontenil est une, un des rares vignobles en Provence qui est en activité uh, depuis le, le, le XVIIe siècle. Depuis 1647, on a nos vignes et on produit nos nos, nos vins chaque année, chaque chaque millésime existe. So Guillaume just said it's a very rare um, vineyard in Provence that since the uh, the 17th century, each year the vineyard has produced wine and there are very few vineyards in Provence that can claim that long, long history up until the present day. So when they bought the vineyard, it was still producing, still producing wine. Um, so it's very much the, the renovation of the rest of the, the men that you, you started on. Yes, we, uh, when we arrived, the, 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 the wine was not so good mm. uh, because it was very old. So we had to renovate also uh, all the, all the vine, uh, vineyards and um, we changed all the, all the plants mm. uh, to restart a new production. Yeah. And were the gardens here like this? Did you have you replanted? No, there, what, what there was what there was um, there was nothing in the here. Uh, what did you see? <laughs> we saw only the trees. Uh, we have a big platan, very uh, very nice one, and uh, this uh, cedar. Uh, 
quite amazing. And here it was just nothing. There was nothing. We created several gardens, uh, a, a more uh, classical one in the east part, yeah. but it was like uh, um, uh, des champs à l'abandon. There was nothing inside. So you had this idea to, to buy a house for yourselves. Yes. And then you began to discuss maybe we should do a hotel. Uh, did you think of sort of chambre d'eau to start with? How did how did this come from that uh, that initial idea? It was uh, well, we decided to buy Fontenil. Uh, it's more or less uh, uh, three thousand metres carrés, so for two and one dog <laughs> it was very very big yeah. uh, and the renovation cost a lot so we decided we, we start to think that we, we could be we could have some uh, chambre d'hôte uh, five or ten yeah. uh, after we so said maybe we can do an hotel yeah. uh, it will be easier and if we have an hotel we have we need to have a restaurant yeah. uh, we we met a, sh a chef uh, it was a one star Michelin chef mm. so we said okay so if we have a, a restaurant gastronomic we need to have also a bistro yeah. Yeah. so we decided to do two restaurants. Yeah. We decided to move the, um, uh, the cellar in the other part mm -hmm. and to create really one hotel, Fontenil, with um, at the beginning with a center of art because I, I used to have my gallery so yeah. it was easy to do uh, exhibition and the, uh, and the, the story uh, starts like this. Wow. But it was very uh, uh, artisanal. We can say artisanal. Yeah. We, we, we 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 started. We try, etc., etc. And we uh, did Fontenil. Uh, we created Fontenil uh, like if it was our uh, own home. Yeah. So if you go inside, you will see some portrait of our, uh, my mother, of Frederick's sister, of uh, all the pieces of art came from our own house in Paris. So it was the uh, the link. Uh, with our own life uh, is very very tricky. So in other words it was never a, a big business hotel it was never something that was sort of generated on a spreadsheet it was something that evolved very totally humanly. Yes it was yeah. we, we uh, when we started we, we all the furniture was moved by ourselves we hung all the, the pieces by ourselves we planted by, by ourselves it was very well, I think very I read you planted trees. Yes yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> it was a, a family business a family thing. <laughs> Well, simple one yeah, what an amazing story um, well, I think what we'll do now is we'll, we'll move up there and we'll have a little a look inside explain to me a little bit about how you started the idea was to recreate a house from the 18th, 19th century, a uh, country house. So we, uh, we find some uh, furniture, a classical French one, but uh, uh, updated for the, for, for the contemporary uh, time. And we wanted to have something very um, classical, soft, and at the same time with pieces of uh, contemporary art. So we have different drawings. Uh, photography in order to, to create uh, um, an univers uh, français uh, assez classique mais en même temps tout à fait actuel. So uh, French atmosphere but at the same time tout à fait uh, so completely contemporary as well. And yeah. So yeah what, certainly what strikes me about the place is you have this juxtaposition between the, the modern works. Yeah. Uh, and the modern works of art and the kind of the classical architecture all around you. Yes, because for us there is no, you can live in an old house and have some, uh, some uh, pieces of art uh, uh, from uh, uh, contemporary artists mm -hmm. and there is no differences. Uh, we can mix them all together. It's uh, very easy and it's uh, the way we, uh, we live with Frédéric. We, uh, uh, at the time, at this time, we had uh, galleries, and uh, we lived in uh, old houses. But you can, uh, there is no separation between uh, uh, the time, the epoch, etc. And you brought a lot of your own art down from Paris. Yes, yes, uh, yes. most of the artists uh, we are presented in Fontenil uh, came from our collection or from the, the, the collection of the gallery. Let's walk on through a little bit, and then I'll just ask you about a couple of the paintings. This is my, my comment on the arrière arrière grand mère. Great great yes. grandmother. My sister still has the, the ring, you yeah. know. Um, 
But you see, you have your great great grandmother, and at the same time, she's facing. I mean, this is kind of exactly. a yeah. there's a boudoir feel here. Yes, uh, and we it's a French, uh, if a Italian painter, uh, Nicolas Amori, and we we love his work. And it's very classical, but in the same the subject are very classical, but the way to to present them, it's not is very contemporary. And in, this, in front of uh, of these paintings, we have my uh, arrière 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 grand mère uh, Claire de Ribérol. Uh, and it was uh, for us very important to keep in Fontenil, to have in Fontenil pieces from our own history. So th this work, for example, I love because you almost don't notice. You, it's there on the wall, but you don't notice the the sort of the spike yes, it's so coming up. It's, it's like a so double. It's a double take. You're like yes, and it's Saint Sebastian. And but we present in our hotel. We have uh, everywhere some pieces of contemporary art, but we don't want to be museum so there is no cartel uh, no light on it you can uh, you can uh, like the pieces you can uh, have interest on it you will find in the bibliotheque different books on the artist yeah. but we don't want to put a light on them and to be uh, 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 demonstrative yeah. Because what, what I really like is there's so many pieces of art here that make you think a little bit and question what the photographer was thinking. So but then it will move on through into the, the sitting room, the salon. Okay, we, we are in the Grand Salon de Fontenil. We, 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 we can keep so the ground was here, the, the cheminée was uh, uh, here. And you have here a drawing from Ethan Moreau. Ethan Moreau is an American artist and it's the first drawing we bought, Frederick and I, when we decided to show Ethan Moreau in uh, our gallery in, in, uh, in Paris. Uh, you have some photography of our family. And so what, what is the history behind this piece? You have a man with a, a screwdriver and some sort of it's looking device staring at a mountain. It, I know it's, very, it's, a very, uh, it's a narrative work and it's, very a, it's a poeti poetical work. Mm -hmm. you, don't first, you don't have a uh, meaning of everything, but uh, it was the first show uh, we present of Ethan in Paris. And when we went in Boston uh, to, to, to meet him, mm -hmm. he, he was doing this drawing. So we yeah. decided when we show, uh, show it in Paris to buy it. Mm -hmm. And it was the first pieces uh, which arrived in Fontenil when we decided to create the hotel. I love it. And these photos here? It's from uh, Frederick family, my grandmother, my mother, and part of family. So, so it really is a, it's a, family, it's yes. a family house. Yeah. And the sheep, of course. I need to hear about the sheep. Uh, well, Tell me about the sheep. The sheep are very, it's from uh, Lormarin. Uh, <laughs> Lormarin is just a, a small village near Fontenil. Uh, it's a place where uh, Albert Camus uh, used to live. And there is a small uh, store when you can find this kind of uh, sheep, very simple, like uh, yeah. for a child, but we, we you gave like them. Podium. Yes, <laughs> it's a monumental one. It's like Olympic medalist. Yes, <laughs> exactly. And some contemporary drawing from uh, European artists around. And this photograph over is that a, a uh, photograph over here? This photograph was from is from uh, his mm, said photography. said Anthony Goicolea. It's an uh, American and Cuban artist, mm -hmm. and uh, we presented also in the, in my gallery in Paris. And it's a very uh, oniric one. Uh, you don't really understand what uh, what's happened. It's a, a beach and also a construction. So yeah, it looks like there's been a concert on a beach. I was yeah. thinking earlier. Yeah. Yes. Uh, by some <laughs> rock and roll band, and they all got shredded, <laughs> or something like that. But I was going to say, the nice thing about Fontenil is that in all the bedrooms you have works of art like this that exactly. make you yeah. question and think. Exactly, um, and we, we try to mix the old things, this uh, uh, lustre uh, came from uh, L'Ile sur la Sorgue, and at the beginning it was uh, very in bad shape, but we, uh, we Frédéric and I, spent a lot of time to recompose them and to uh, and to, to have them like this. So you have, the, you have this lovely old light there and then on your staircase you have a wonderful modern yes. light hanging down. Yes, exactly. A modern chandelier. Exactly. Um, so again, sort of modern and old mixed. Um, so Guillaume, the sun is shining. We're here in Provence, so of course we're, we're having a little bit of rosé. Your history began with looking for a vineyard. Yes. Um, let's discuss a little bit about the rosé you made, why you chose to make this type of rosé. I guess these days you can make a rosé apéro, you can make a rosé gastronomique. Lots of vineyards have four or five different types of rosé. What we wanted to do is to have a very strong rosé. 
And, euh, nos goûts, notre préférence, c'est sur des rosés qui sont assez, assez euh, charpentés, mmh. assez forts. On a nous aujourd'hui un rosé qui est fait de, de syrah et de, et de grenache qui est à 13,5 degrés, ce fait assez élevé pour un rosé et c'est un rosé qu'on a à la fois dans une cuvée classique qui est une cuvée fontenille et dans la cuvée Alphonse, Alphonse de Savournin, qui est élevée en, en chêne. Ok, donc so we're, we're a rosé qui est un grenache et syrah mix um, that's qui um, est vinifié dans une façon différente, une fois de plus. Il y a une cuvée classique yeah. uh, dans une uh, cuvée d'inox et il y a une seconde cuvée Uh, we grow in a uh, in, uh, uh, tonneau de bois yeah. and uh, this one is Alphonse de Savonin cuvée. So it's an oak, it's an oak rosé which, yeah. which is more and more common, you get a um, sort of a more gastronomic rosé. Exactly, can, yeah. yeah. Uh, m- many people say that rosé doesn't go with food but lots of, vi- yes. lo- lots of vineyards now are oaking rosé to give them a bit more exactly. flavour. Um, what should we taste? Yeah, we should <laughs> taste. <laughs> Delicious. Yes, and it's it's quite strong, yeah. and we, we love it. And, and it's uh, this kind of rosé. It's quite uh, unique. So each year we have several médailles d'or yeah. with this uh, type of rosé uh, in Luberon. So we are very uh, proud of our, our team. And as we were also talking about earlier, you make one of the best white wines in the Luberon. Yes, as well. it, because there is no white uh, uh, wine in Luberon. So when we decided to to to, to renovate uh, the vineyard, we uh, it was very important for us to have a very very good and uh, particular uh, white uh, wine here. And to come to come full circle with your story, you finished the Vendée la Fontenille. You'd not intended to set up a hotel, you're going to buy a private house, you're going to have a vineyard, you're going to relax, move down from Paris, change your lives. You do Domaine de la Fontenille and then someone says to you, oh, there's a hotel for sale in, in Marseille you might be interested to. Uh, more or less, it's yes, it's true. Yeah. <laughs> yes, because we have one client here in, in uh, Fontenille and uh, who tell us one day uh, that he knows a hotel in Marseille uh, will be uh, for sale. and. Like for, with curiosity, we, we went and uh, the place was just incredible. It's in the center of Marseille, Plage des Catalans. So you are just f- a five minute walk from the, the ancien uh, le port de Marseille. And you are just in front of the sea, in front of uh, Les Îles du Frioul. And it's a very small uh, place. There is 20 rooms, there are s- small rooms, but with amazing view. You have all the Mediterranean Sea, so it's just amazing. It's a different building. Uh, it's a building from the 1930. And we we created a place is totally different from uh, from Fontenay. It's, it's a very striking white though. Yes, a very very with the lines noir, the very very graphic yeah. graphic run decoration is uh, is very light. The only actor is the sea. So it's uh, you when you are in your bed, you can you can touch the the boat yeah. on the sea. It's just amazing. And you catch the hotel bug because you don't stop with the one in Marseille. You then. You've just opening one on the Atlantic coast. You've got one yes. In last year we have uh, we opened two in uh, one in uh, Osgore. It's a uh, uh, near Bar- Biarritz. We have two in uh, Menorca in the Balearic uh, Island, mm-hmm. and uh, we have two hotels who will open next uh, next month in uh, near Paris, uh, Domaine de Primar, and near uh, Osgore also in Senos. So we are a little um, crazy <laughs> or bulimic, I don't know if we can say that, or naive, uh, but it, each time it's, there are specific places and we, uh, we fall in love with the, the place, with the house, and we try to do our best to convert them into hotels. Did you get the karma lifestyle that you were looking for? Or are you still looking for that? We are, I think, still looking <laughs> for that. <laughs> Well, Guillaume, thank you very much for your time. Merci beaucoup.